All right, uh, let's start off with a quick uh, refresher because we've uh, got some additions. Uh, I always like to go back to the four blocker to start, right? So if we're here to do continuous improvement, there's basically only four methodologies available to us, okay? And there's no order to this. Just because I start with DMAIC doesn't mean that's the one you have to use first. But DMAIC is specifically for problems with no proven solution. Do you have any more books? I'll get you one. You don't need it right now. Problems with no proven solution. Just mess my video, man. I gotta start over. <laughs> All right. Um, so, and, and again, those who do do, those who can't teach, well, I believe those who teach do it better uh, because you kind of find the error of your ways many times. So, um, I used to say that it was for business problems with no known solution. But then, as I said, I, I realized using DMAIC, I can lose weight. Uh, right now, I'm in my third rotation of increasing my weight. I like to tell myself I'm increasing my weight so I can test my hypotheses. You know, and trainer gains 50 pounds to lose it again. Uh, but I have pretty much, so the Y for DMAIC is the problem, and the X is the cause. So DMAIC is just good old cause and effect analysis. Your doctor should inherently use DMAIC. A, a detective would inherently use the DMAIC methodology. Your mechanic, right? You want them to identify the problem with your car and then identify the root cause, okay? Uh, and so without, I just, I'm now fully, fully proven that wine is the number one cause of my weight fluctuation. Um, and I want to say that it's actually, I think wine causes more swelling and bloating. And then wine causes me to want to eat sugary things and lose my inhibition for eating healthy. So I, I just, I tried to set up, you know, a policy and procedure where Lee can have two glasses and after two, he must get 15 year old daughter's approval. Uh, but it's just not working. So, um, but that's to make, you know, you can use it to reduce debt, your personal debt, right? The Y is how much debt you have or your debt to income ratio. And then the X is trying to figure out where you're spending it. Okay. All right. Then we have lean and lean. The Y is typically cycle time and the X is non-value added steps or activities. So lean is the removal of waste and how the two go together always solve problems using the demand methodology because particularly you know the lean folks are not always that disciplined around the measure phase so demand forces you to baseline the problem in statistically valid ways but if you tell me it takes too long to hire somebody for example i would expect to see a lot of the lean tools right value stream map value added non-value added analysis etc all right, now what we're going to cover the first couple days this week is design for Six Sigma. Design for Six Sigma. And that is for creating new stuff. I say that because just think of verbs. What are you making? What are you buying? What are you building? Okay, uh, that's what de uh, Design for Six Sigma is for. I'm making so I'm building a deck. Okay, and you'll see in a minute it forces you to ask some questions. The why for Design for Six Sigma is the customer needs. And the X is the solution. So in the other videos, I mean in the other uh, methodologies, the Y is singular, okay? And the X can be plural. Design for Six Sigma, the Y is plural, because again, the wife says you wanna, uh, you know, I'd like to have a romantic weekend. That's not measurable. So you make it a Design for Six Sigma. Project, what is your definition of romance? Well, I want to spend quality time together and I want to have a nice meal and I'd like to go somewhere fun. Okay, well, now we're, we've got three customer needs that are still not measurable. So you keep asking, well, what's quality time together? All right, darn it. You know, at this point they might explode, but 
I want at least four hours a day with you on this trip where you have no technology in your hand or ears. Okay? Now, again, always don't ever, you know, one of the major things I like to use throughout all of this is Lean's principle, mistake proofing. I, I, that's one of the major things I try to incorporate in my personal life. One of the easiest ways you can either tell yourself, be disciplined, be disciplined, don't use cell phone. Or go somewhere with no cell phone service, right? I mean, you pick a hotel up in the mountains, limited cell phone service, you don't even have to worry about it, okay? All right, so, or there's one other use for design for Six Sigma, and that is where existing has reached entitlement. Existing has reached entitlement. There are times in manufacturing where minor improvement is not enough. And I guess you could say in services, like um, if you've got a Pentium Ram 386 processor CPU at home, I don't know that I'd work on that anymore, right? Uh, I'd pr it's probably time to go ahead and move into some newer technology. And, and then at that point, you can stop and make that purchasing decision, a design for Six Sigma project. Like if you're gonna be in a business school or a business program, I would suggest not getting a Mac, right? Because Mac was not made for uh, scientific applications. Um, so those types of things. And then finally, and we're gonna spend more time on this, that's what we're doing this week. Finally, go do's. Not everything has to be a project at all. So, but an example, let's say I own a, you know, I own a Home Depot or a Lowe's. There are holes in the parking lot. It's a go do, right? I need to get some asphalt and fill it. Uh, I worked for uh, one of the retailers and they actually, was a, we didn't have a policy where the store manager could actually do that. So we had to create one, it was a go-do. But then it leads to perhaps a demand project of how can you reduce the number of potholes formed within the first year of the store being open, right? Uh, you know, or you define a defect. You say, well, you know, a brand new store shouldn't have a pothole in the first year, but yet, 20% of stores have a pothole in the first year. There you go. We got a demand project, which then might lead to a design for Six Sigma project. By the way, this is a true story. Uh, we came up with a way to build a better parking lot. The root cause of holes in the parking lot in the first year had to do with the recipe and the laying of the asphalt, right? I won't get more scientific than that. So we used design for Six Sigma to come up with a new way to do that. All right. Now, Lean would just come in, you want to build the store quicker. And this is why I like Lean Six Sigma. You may actually want to build the parking lot slower, which kind of violates Lean, right? Because then we want to do it fast, but you may actually want to do it slower because it prevents uh, the defects. Okay, so a good Lean Six Sigma practitioner is aware of all these things. And the major takeaways, we're constantly doing cost benefit, right? Constantly thinking, Yes, fast might be good from a labor standpoint, but the long-term costs of filling potholes. Why do you care about a pothole, by the way, in the retail industry? Why would you think? Because it's ugly? Or can someone step in it and break a leg and sue you for $100,000? You say, well, you know, what's a pothole cost? It's a lot. All right? All right, so with that, pause this one. <clears throat>